Hi everyone, my name is Hussein Jirde and I work on the Chrome team at Google focusing on open source frameworks and tooling. In the second half of this talk, Minko will be diving into some core features that Chrome and Angular have collaborated on to improve end user performance for every Angular application. Before we do that, however, I quickly wanted to talk about why Chrome is even getting involved in the framework space to begin with. JavaScript frameworks, like Angular, have played a significant role in enabling developers to build complex and interactive web experiences. The Chrome and web platform teams here at Google care about user experience, and we understand how hard it can be to continue to add features to a site while ensuring performance continues to meet an acceptable threshold. The primary goal of our efforts is to enable success at scale by bringing solutions to the right layers of popular tech stacks and client-side frameworks like Angular, React, Next.js, and Vue, or Next.js, make up a very important layer. By bridging the gap between browsers and frameworks, we can land useful optimizations that solve problems developers wouldn't have to worry about themselves. In addition, this can all act as a feedback loop to improve the web platform itself. By following this model, we can take steps towards a world where high quality experiences become a side effect of building for the web. To better understand how to quantify performance, we can take a look at Cowork Vitals, or the set of metrics that let anyone measure the user experience of their site and identify opportunities to improve. These are currently largest contentful paint, an indicator of speed that measures how long it has taken for the largest element on a page to fully load, cumulative layout shift, which measures visual stability by calculating the number of layout shifts that occur during a session, and first input delay, which provides an indicator of responsiveness and interactivity by measuring how long it takes a page to respond after the first user interaction. Although the set of metrics can evolve over time, we plan on continuing to work with frameworks like Angular to ensure that the default experience is a site that meets all the core of vital thresholds and does not compromise performance when new features are added. Now, the rest of this talk will be focusing on our collaboration with Angular. And I would like to cover a specific example of how working with the Angular team has helped improve the design of core of vitals, namely largest contentful paint. As a quick recap, let's cover how server-side rendering works. In a traditional, purely server-rendered architecture, incoming requests are handled entirely on the server, and the requested content is rendered and returned as an HTML document. Angular provides an option to server-render initial markup that will automatically fetch and render the required JavaScript to bootstrap the application. Instead of attaching event listeners to the DOM, Angular takes the approach of rebuilding the entire DOM tree once the required JavaScript has loaded. So although there's no visible change to the UI, elements on the page are actually removed and recreated. This approach works great, but the one issue with the previous implementation of LCP is that it did not take into account elements removed from the DOM. Remember, LCP looks for the largest element in the viewport. So for the most part, this makes sense. Imagine sites that load a splash screen before the main content. We wouldn't want that to be the LCP candidate on the page. Unfortunately, however, the way Angular hydrates content after server rendering means that the entire DOM, including the LCP element, would be removed and not considered until it gets rebuilt. Now, this is a problem. After the Angular team and community flagged the issue with how LCP is measured in server rendered applications, the Chrome Speed Metrics team prioritized the development of an improved version of the metric that does take into account removed elements. Once the required changes were made and testing was done, the new version of the metric was switched from experimental to stable and was updated in both the Web Performance API and internally within Google. This was all done before page experience, including core of vitals, would be included in Google search ranking. 
Now, I wanted to highlight all of this as an example of how our collaboration with Angular not only helped optimize the framework, but also pushed forward improvements to the rest of the ecosystem. Now, for the rest of this talk, Minko will be explaining some specific optimizations to Angular that have improved Core Web Vital scores. Hussein, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Minko Getchev. I'm working on Angular at Google. And today, in this part of the presentation, I would want to share with you a couple of optimizations that we have been working on in order to improve the Core Web Vital metrics for all the Angular applications out there. As Hussein mentioned, Angular has been closely working with the Chrome team on the implementation of Core Web Vitals, in particular with Largest Contentful Paint. We have been also collaborating on improving the Core Web Vitals scores for all the Angular applications. The Chrome Web SDK team identified a few opportunities for improvement across the entire JavaScript ecosystem and helped with enabling them by default for different frameworks. As part of this talk, I would want to share a few of them. In particular, we're going to cover Google Font and critical CSS inlining and the image component that is optimized with Core Web Vitals in mind. Let us first look into font inlining. A common scenario is adding Angular material to your project. The Angular material component for icons uses the material icons font, which ends up being part of your HTML. Let us run ng-build prots and have a look at where indexed HTML references the font. Notice we have a link tag with href to Google fonts that includes the material icons in the application. If we open that font file, we're going to find the following CSS which defines the font face via a reference to a WAF2 file. When the browser starts loading the application, it will discover the link tag and load the font styles. From there, it needs to download the font face definition. These two requests need to be sequential, meaning we have to perform two round trips to the CDN that is hosting our resources. Finally, when we fetch all these assets, we'll be able to render the application. Let us see how index.html will look like when we have font inlining enabled. Notice we have styles directly inlined inside the head of the HTML file. At build time, the font inlining will fetch the font styles and inline them in index.html. This way, at load time, the browser will have to perform just a single request to download the font face. Given that loading styles is a blocking operation, inlining the style sheet at build time will help us load font faster at runtime and improve the first and the largest contentful paint on the page. At the same time, our app could have a lot of styles, which could delay both first contentful paint and largest contentful paint. If we want to naively just load all the styles and synchronously, for example, by setting the media none and handling the onload event, we can worsen the user experience. The browser will first render the unstyled content. After that, load the styles and apply them. Such behavior will cause regression in user experience and cumulatively outshift. The Chrome team developed a tool called Critters, which at build time can match styles selectors to the DOM and figure out the critical CSS in a performant way. For example, right here, the first style is applied to the bottom, but the second style is unused, and critters will be able to figure this out at build time. Angular CLI uses critters under the hood in order to find the critical styles and inline them in the application head. The rest of the styles we just load lazily. This optimization has improved both first contentful and largest contentful paints. It is also applicable across the board, which means that we can enable it for client-side rendered applications, for application shell, for pre-rendering and server-side rendering as well. For all but server-side rendering, it happens at build time, which means you have zero runtime cost. Because server-side rendering builds the page markup on requests, we can discover the critical CSS and inline it at render time. Font inlining is currently enabled by default for everyone, and starting in version 12, we're also going to enable critical CSS inlining by default. 
All you need to do in order to take advantage of these two optimizations is run ng update once version 12 is out. And until then, just make sure that you give them a try and let us know what you think. The last optimization I would want to talk about is a joint effort with the NGZR team. Together with Yadong and Leon, we've been collaborating on an image component which follows best practices to improve largest contentful paint and cumulative layout shift. The image component has a lot of useful features, including functionality for providing a fallback image. It allows you to progressively load an image, specify a layout, and so on. From performance perspective, it can also help you to automatically generate the SRC set for a predefined set of CDM providers, allowing you to implement adapters for custom providers. It also supports preloading of images in server-side rendered environment, and also it has strict dimensions support in order to reduce cumulative layout shift. Well, these are just a couple of the opportunities that we have been exploring. In the future, we're going to look into quite a few others. For example, conformance via linting, we'll be looking into additional font provider inlining, we will be exploring Core Web Vital reporting and so much more. This is everything we have for you today. Thank you very much for joining our talk and uh, happy coding.